one of my uh, favorite steelhead flies and it's incredibly simple and uh, it looks depending on how you tie the body either like a gob of eggs or like a uh, like a uh, an October catus nymph and I basically take some tinsel just using red or flame thread wind it up to about the middle of the hook and I'm gonna wind that tinsel kind of down the hook back over itself And what I'm doing is I'm actually putting a, a layer of tinsel and a, you don't care how perfect it is underneath most of the body and the back part of it, the only reason you're trying to overwind it like that is to make it look nice in case somebody happens to see your fly, it doesn't really affect the effectiveness of it. So I've got kind of an underbody of tinsel and I'm just going to take my thread and kind of wind it back. I got about a quarter of an inch of that. Now what I'm using is this uh, orange trilobal stuff, but you can use, uh, for dubbings, one of the most effective ones I've seen is kind of a pink, uh, or this orange color like this mixed with the pink, 50-50. You can't blend it in a coffee grinder as usual. You're gonna have to blend it with your fingers the old fashioned way. And if you dub that body thin like I'm doing right here, it really looks like a stonefly nymph, a stonefly, uh, like a catus fly nymph, like the, uh, the fall catus nymph. And uh, this time of year, this being August, they tend to actually dump their cases and, and free float in the current on two to three feet deep water in the Mackenzie here around two o'clock in the afternoon. And a lot of people don't know that. And if you're fishing this fly for trout, you can pick up some huge native trout on this thing. A little bit fatter body like this and it looks really more like a uh, uh, like an egg than anything else. And then the the hackle wing or whatever it is that finishes the fly is a couple of turns of teal or gadwall and I just kind of clip that tip off pulling it back. I'm going to tie it in firmly and then I'm just going to gently wind three turns of this and they're not on top of each other. One turn goes in front of the other one and I'm folding the feathers back pulling them back so that I end up with a nice, neat hackle shape. So it flows evenly. Danville thread, counter spin it, until it goes nice and flat. And I put it over my thumbnail and I can see it when I'm counter spinning it. It spins counterclockwise. When it finally goes flat, then all those fibers are parallel. And what you can do is you can whip finish a very small head. And uh, this works great for nice big salmon and steelhead flies. However, you can tie a size 26 midge with this better than you can with most of the new modern threads. Um, I love this stuff.